So the main card starts off with a banger. We have got Sean O'Malley against Rulian Pavia. And when you look at this, Pavia, a lot more fight experience, right? He is 21 and 3 on a free fight win streak. You know, came to the UFC via the contender series, a bit like O'Malley. Um, he he he's lost a few fights, right? Lost to Kai Kara France and Rogerio Bontaniri. Um, but that overhand right he landed on De La Rosa was ferocious. And he did look good against Zuma Gulov. You know what I mean? I did think Kyla Phillips won their fight, right? I was surprised by that decision. But Paev is, he's good. He trains at Team Alpha Male, so you know he's training with savages. He's training with savages. But, oh, manly man, right? The, the way he beat um, Montanino. Right, just that display of striking and Thomas Almeida. Right, that it, it was just something the way he worked those hands in those two fights super impressive. Now, yes, there is the Vera loss, right? But it was you read know, that 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 just. What you read, it, it was that muscle at the back of your calf. Right? And we see he had to drop foot, right? We saw it happen to Jimmy Crew, Michael Chad. Like it's happened to a few people. So it, it's kind of a fluke. Now, it's not to say Vera was uh, lucky to win that fight, because I think it's a competitive fight, right? And if they fought 10 times, Neither is going to win all of those fights, right? So I think it's a toss-up. But I, I think O'Malley, it doesn't really hurt O'Malley. Now, the way he handled the loss, yeah, he wasn't the best. But we, we've seen him do work, right? The uh, Quintanez fight, the Wyland fight, he, he's just looked great. He's looked great. And... He wants a big fight, right? He wants a big fight. So I think we're going to see him try and make Parva the sacrilegious... Sacrilegious cow? Sa sacrilegious cow? Fuck, I have no clue. That doesn't sound right, but I don't... I Whatever it is, man. I think he's going to do that. Also... Pavia trains with Garbrandt and they've got beef. So I think he's going to, yeah, he, he wants to put a little stamp on this one. So I, I'm taking the sugar show to keep on rolling, people. To keep on rolling. And, hey, speaking of Garbrandt, he is up next. Oh, and this is his flyweight debut going up against Kaikara France, right? So, man, and we know Garbrandt has just beat up against it, man. Just having the COVID and just everything. Yeah, it's just brutal, right? Brutal. So it's, you know, I mean, is he going to be back, right? How... Is everything going to be? And you you train hard, but it, it, it's not quite the same. Do you know what I mean? It's not quite the same as being in there with someone who is literally trying to kill you. Now, your training partners will be pushing you, but they're not trying to kill you. Do you know what I mean? I think that's the difference. Like, we, we saw him come off that just... Yeah. Oh man, it, crazy fight with Rob Font. And Font really worked him. Really worked him, man. Just, yeah, Rob Font just, he, he just controlled that fight. Now, 
The one thing you have to wonder about with Garbrandt is his chin. I, he did take some some shots in the uh, Sun Tzu fight and the Fun fight, and it was okay. But when we've seen people cut down, we've seen their chin become a little bit more fragile. So with Garbrandt and he, he his chin sometimes letting him down, I I think that might be an issue. Maybe it won't, but going to a past experience, I do have to wonder about that. Also, you think that with someone pressuring him, Garbrandt. It, like that could lure him into a dog fight, and that's where Garbrandt gets reckless. And Cara France, he's gonna pressure him. He he's gonna be pressuring him, and just really putting in that work. And you know, we, we've seen Cara France look sensational, right? The the way he got rid of um, Bonterin. Super impressive. Like he looked great against Brandon Royval. That was back and forth. It's it's just it was Royval's day, you know. So man, Kyrie Fights has looked good. He's only lost to Moreno, the current champ, and Royval in the UFC. You know, which is hey, that's impressive, man. You know, and he's fought some tough people. He beat Pavier. Piver, even. Pavier. Piver. He beat Piver. You know what I mean? So, look, we, we see the beat tough people. And I think, I, I, I just think with his work rate and he, his determination, because, you know, if, if you listen to him in the press conference, he feels this is a title eliminator, right? So, I, I think. I think he's just going to be so focused. I think Cara France is going to walk away with that victory. You know, uh, so we then jump to the welterweight division, our feature fight of the night. We've got Santiago Pontalibio against Jeff Neal, which whew, this is a banger, people. This is a banger. Now, Pontanibio, you know, he was off for a while with just injuries and everything like that, especially after coming off a good win over Neil Magny. Now, he, he came back and he just, he looked rusty against Li Jingong, right? I, I think that's fair to say. But when he fought Miguel Meza, he looked good. He looked very good in that fight. But Jeff Neal is, is different. Jeff Neal is dead. They don't call him hands of steel for nothing, right? And yes, he is coming off back-to-back -back losses. You know, Stephen Thompson and Neil Magny. Now, the, the, the Thompson fight, it's just that unorthodox footwork and style that Wonderboy brings to the octagon. You know what I mean? And Magni, Neil just looked a little off that night. Right? Not taking anything away from Magni, because Magni really controlled that fight and looked good. But Neil looked off. And I, I think he knows he's got to get back to it, because he was in contention to a title shot. He knows that. And he wants to get back there, right? He beat Bilal Muhammad, you know, who, who's, A, being talked about as a potential challenger, right? So he, he knows he can beat the, you know, the, the, the tough motherfuckers in this division. So I, I think he's he's worked on those things that let him down in the previous two. And I, I think he's looking to make a statement. And especially after the, you know, the shit that he's 
got himself into recently, right? He, he wants to put that good foot forward. So, yeah, I'm taking Hands of Steel to, uh, to get it done, people, right? That's what I'm thinking, man. That is what I'm thinking. So, so we are now co-main event. The co-main event. And boy, this one is an interesting fight. It's an interesting fight, right? The bantamweight strap. Amanda Nunes, the GOAT. Right? And, you know, I, sometimes that cut can be difficult, but she did address that on Unfiltered this week, say she's changed her diet so it, it's easier. Right? And, I mean, when she's fought at Bandaway, she's looked good. Right? She has looked very good. So it, it's hard to just even think that anyone can beat her. It, it really is. Now, here's the thing, right? Because we had Pedda talking a lot of smack, a lot of smack at the press release, press conference, and just leading up to this fight, saying Nunes is scared, Nunes is ducking her, which, I mean, there's talking of a fight, and there is being ridiculous. I just think anyone claiming someone is scared of them in the UFC, it is just a little foolish, right? Well, I, I don't think anyone is scared, right? You're, you've got to the big show, right? You've proven your skill set. Yeah, people ain't scared, especially someone that went in there and murked Chris Cyborg. New days ain't scared. And also, right, now, oh, Nunez did say that, you know, Pena was a carbon copy of Misha Tate. Now, I don't know if I would say that, but what I would say is Nunez has fought people very similar to Pena. Right, she's dealt with that skill set. So, yeah, to it, it, there's just no way she's scared, right? No way she's scared. And we've seen, we saw Pena get handled by Shevchenko, which, hey, no shame because we know how great Shevchenko is. But we've also seen Nunes beat Shevchenko, and yes, that's MMA maps. But I, I just think. The you know, Nunes just brings so much to the table. I don't think Pena has got enough, and I like Pena. I'm yeah, you know, I was super impressed with Pena on the Ultimate Fighter, right? It's season 18. She looked great, she looked great, won it, won it all, you know. What I mean? But when you look at the level of competition, Nunes has fought clearly at a higher level and dispatched those people, right? Dispatched those people. She knows what it's like. She's done the five rounds numerous times. So, yes, McMahon, like Pena beat McMahon, but I just... It doesn't seem enough, right? Because she got choked out by Durandere. Durandere had never won by submission until that fight, right? Which, is, I mean, that speaks volumes, right? The Shevchenko fight, it speaks volumes. And I don't think, however tough, and Pena is tough, she is tough. But I think a lot of what we're seeing out of her, all the trash talk and everything like that, like, oh, I don't believe Nunez had COVID. It does all this. It's trying to psych herself up. 
trying to convince herself that she has a chance and I just don't think she does. You know what I mean? I just don't think she has a chance. Which, you know, it, it, it's a tough thing. Because as I said, look, Peggy is very skilled. But the lioness. I mean, come on, man. Come on. Right? The way she just dismantled Anderson. She was just, you know, battering Spencer. I right? batter Spencer. Yeah, like we we saw her just take out Holly Holm, Chris Cyborg, Pennington. You know, it just the way she got to that title and won that belt. She's a different type of fighter. She's a different fight fighter. You know, last loss was 2014. But since that loss, right, we, we saw her, the way she's worked on the cardio, worked on her conditioning, just all of that shit. And, yeah, I don't see anyone that could legitimately beat her. So, man, Amanda Nunes, people, and still, and still, now, the main event. Charles Oliveira is the new right way champ. And Dustin Poirier, I mean, is it like you feel that Dustin Poirier is kind of the people's champ. People feel that, you know, he's the uncrowned, right? Everyone thought that he should have been in that title fight. But, hey, you can't knock. Poirier's business sense for taking the McGregor fights, right? It makes sense, especially financially. And especially, he's trying to make money for his, you know, his charity and all of that business. Now, one of the big things going into this fight, people keep on talking about, is Oliveira and the dog, right? I say, don't think Oliveira's got that dog in him. Right, people say Oliveira has quit in fights. He's been broken. And yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that has happened for sure. That has happened. Here's the thing. In the Chandler fight, Oliveira was rocked. Right? Oliveira was rocked, people. You thought Chandler was going to win that fight at one point. Oliveira came back. He could have given up. Could have given up, but he didn't. He gutted it out. And I think that, people, is the thing here. That's the thing. Because I think sometimes we get to that point and you question yourself, can I do this? Do I have what it takes to get past this point? Can I get over this wall? And there's been times when Oliveira got to that wall and was like, I can't, I, I can't, man. I can't. But what we saw happen in the Chandler fight was he's like, yeah, you know what? Fuck this wall. He overcame it and he won the fight. He overcame it and he won the fight. Now, what's telling is, right, how many times have we seen people get to the title and their game is suddenly transformed, right? It, it's like they've leveled up. You know what I mean? They beat the big boss, 100 life points. And I, I think that's what we see, going to see from Oliveira, because he, 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 he doubted himself. But he saw what he could do in the Chandler fight. He saw, hey, these walls, these barriers, I can scale these. I've got the experience. I've been in this game a long time. I've been in there with some of the elite. And so, yeah, I, I think getting the title is going to be transformative for Oliveira. 
And obviously, this is a tough fucking fight, right? Because Dustin Poirier, you know, when you talk about people finding that thing, believing in themselves, man, we saw it with Poirier. Right after the Michael Johnson loss, where they were both drawing at each other and they wanted to be the king of Louisiana, right? And we and we saw Poirier lose, right? He got knocked out. But after that fight, we saw a change in Poirier. We saw a change in him. So yeah, this is gonna be a tough fucking fight. It really is. But I think people are really doing Charles Oliveira a disadvantage, a disservice even, by by just writing him off, writing him off. Because, you know, has Poirier fought anyone with the jiu-jitsu skills of Charles Oliveira recently? And I think the, the answer is no. Right, Anthony Pettis fought him in 2017. Pettis is good, and we've seen Pettis get submissions, but Charles Oliveira is on a different level to Pettis. Definitely on a different level to Pettis, right? So, you know, I I I I just feel that. Yeah, the, the jiu-jitsu skills of Charles Oliveira is going to be a huge factor in this fight. And the fact that Oliveira also, his stand-up, his stand-up has been looking great, right? He, he has really improved that, really improved that stand-up, people, which, game-changer, right? It's a motherfucking game-changer, you know what I mean? And, and and he's pulled off knockouts. You know, Chandler knocked out uh, Jared Gordon, Nick Lentz. You know what I mean? And yes, you might go, yeah, but they're, are, are they world class? Maybe not world class, but they're tough motherfuckers. They're no joke, right? Definitely no joke. So when you consider that he has choked out Clay Roida, right? Christos Gijas, Jim Miller, right? David Tabor. You're like, ooh, yeah. Kevin Lee. You know, that jujitsu. It's good, man. He controlled Tony Ferguson. And then just knocked out Chandler. So, yeah, I I think Charles Oliveira, Du Bronx, we're seeing the transformation. We're seeing the leveling up. We are seeing that title mentality. And I think Oliveira is going to surprise the world with and 